Here in the silver safe we find the tenth object, which will complete our tour of English Christianity and the treasures of St Michael St Albans. This metal cup lands us in the 20th century and invites us to grapple with the horrors of modern warfare. It's a chalice, a holy cup, used in the celebration of communion, the Christian ritual which recalls the Last Supper and execution of Jesus. On initial inspection, this chalice is pretty unassuming. It's a little under six inches tall and a little over three inches in diameter. Chalices to this design were mass produced in silver plate for Whipples, a large ecclesiastical stockist. The style is so common that St Michael's owns a second cup of identical design. Both were probably manufactured at the turn of the 20th century. This chalice is unique therefore not because of its craftsmanship, but because of its history. The side of the bowl is engraved with the words In France, many lips that pressed this cup rose from their knees and died for you. The chalice was used in the trenches of the First World War by a chaplain, Reverend Francis George Frost. Frost had already had an adventurous life by the time he signed up for military service. Born in East London, he lost several toes when, aged 16, he fell under a train at Stratford Station. Two years later, he travelled alone to remote Saskatchewan in Canada, where he became a farmer. Discerning a call to ordination, he studied theology and was ordained in 1914. Within months, he had joined the Canadian Army and was whisked back to Europe. Francis Frost served in the battles of Ypres and the Somme and was awarded a Distinguished Conduct Medal for his bravery. He was subsequently seriously wounded and spent almost a year in hospital. After the war, he went on to serve in a string of suburban and rural parishes. It was a very typical ministry for a clergyman of his day. One of the eight children of Francis, Michael Frost, became churchwarden here at St Michael's. The chalice was left in memory of them both following Michael's death in 1994. I think the simplicity and backstory of this cup makes it one of the most precious artefacts we have considered in this series, and one of the most poignant facets of St Michael's long history. The connection between the use of this chalice in Christian ritual and its presence on the Western Front is profound. During Holy Communion, wine is shared among the congregation as a reminder of the blood of Jesus on the cross. The resonance between Christ's sacrificial death and the fate of soldiers down the ages has been captured in art and poetry and countless war memorials. The atrocities of the Great War had a profound impact on the Christian churches. They threw up massive theological questions about the nature of God and the problem of evil. The slaughter of millions undermined the beliefs of many while at the same time reinforcing others' faith in a better future. 20th century warfare generated pastoral challenges too, asking how the churches might support those who had been injured in mind and body. And it led some Christians to re-examine their theology of what might happen after we die. Finally, mechanised warfare has invited renewed reflection on the ethics of conflict, in particular within the churches about whether there might ever be a just war. Should Christians fight for what is right, or is it more godly to be a pacifist? These issues echo down to our own century as the government confronts the morality of military intervention in arenas such as Iraq and Afghanistan. We have examined ten objects, some unique, others very mundane. They are all located here in St Michael St Albans, but each illuminates a wider narrative. I hope this series has aided your exploration of these intellectual, spiritual and artistic movements, and has whetted your interest to visit this holy place. I was once told 
that Archbishop Robert Runcie defined St Michael's as the most ordinary and extraordinary parish in England. This is both why and how it tells the story of English Christianity.